All right, this is our ASIC from scratch, which is a video series I want to do where we start from a complete vanilla install of Ubuntu Linux, and we're going to be doing an RNA-seq differential expression experiment and hopefully arrive at a clean result. So today we're going to be starting by installing software. And in my opinion, for bioinformatics, the most important quality for you and the system you're working on is to be agile. Bioinformatics software is not exactly well written in many cases. Um, you might have to deal with software that is ancient, has been abandoned in 2014, and the developer has since lived a quiet life in the African savanna. So it's on you to make it work somehow. And a bunch of technologies exist to deal with this complex dependencies and make your life a little bit easier. And my favorite one for this, my favorite one is called Singularity. And I realized there are other technologies out there. There's Conda, Docker containers. You can build everything from scratch. I too used to use Gen2. But I like Singularity for three reasons. It's reproducible. You can just take your Singularity image, attach it to your paper as a supplementary, and your analysis will be perfectly reproducible in terms of the software side of things. It is relatively easy once you have it set up because other people build containers for you, so you can just take their containers and run the software from there. And three, it also works very well on high-performance clusters, and a number of bioinformaticians have access to these, so it's not as un unusual as you might think that we get to use a HPC cluster. Now, first things first, if you're sitting in front of a Windows or macOS computer, I really recommend you get Linux on it. Uh, for Windows, get the Windows subsystem for Linux. If you're on a Mac computer, you can get a virtual box with a Ubuntu on it. There are guides out there. And I realized that Mac OS is Unix, not Linux. Um, so a lot of software builds just fine on it, but the, f the fact of the matter is that most bioinformatics software is written with Linux as a first-class citizen. And Mac OS and Windows are usually an afterthought. So you will have a much better experience on a Linux system from scratch. Often you will also get access to a server that you log into and run your analyses there. And I pretty much guarantee that that server is going to be running one version of Linux, one distro or another. All right, the other thing is you will need admin access. You can build Singularity without admin access, but it's really not recommended. It makes a very restricted installation of it. So if you don't have admin access, maybe ask your administrator to install Singularity for you or ask your administrator to get admin access. Anyway, let's get started. So what I have here is a completely vanilla installation of Ubuntu 20.04. All I have done so far is update it once and uh, customize the terminal a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to be starting the installation of Singularity. <laughs> Singularity is a container management system which acts a little bit like a virtualization layer in between your operating system and whatever is inside the container, which allows us to have a completely compartmentalized environment within a sandbox that doesn't interfere with any outside systems, which is perfect if you have to manage some complex dependencies. So the website of Singularity is scilabs.io slash singularity. And the installation that we're going to be doing is going to be mostly following the guide that they have here. So go on docs and 3.6 user guide, no, 3.6 admin guide. And we can go straight down to installation on Linux. I'm going to be skipping a lot of the FAQ here and a lot of uh, explanations 
I will not go over them, but maybe for you it's not a bad idea to read some of them, if you know what they, what they mean. Now, we are on Ubuntu, which is a Debian-based system, so we're going to be using these commands here. What they do is they update our package manager and they install a bunch of packages that are necessary for us to build Singularity from source. And yes, we're going to be building from source because Singularity don't offer packages. Um, packages that do exist are maintained by the community. So if you want the latest, greatest version, if you want to control things yourself, you will need to, you, you will need to build from source. And don't worry, it looks harder than it is. We're just going to be following this guide for the most part anyway. So I'll, pop, I'll copy paste those two commands. And this is where admin access already comes in. Because I need my admin password to install these dependencies. Now while that is installing, um, next we will need Go. Go is a programming language and Singularity is written in it. So in order to build it from source, we will need the Go compiler. So what we have here is the command that will install Go on our system, but I don't want to install version 1.13.5. I want to install version 1.15. So what I can do here is press Control X, Control E to have a little text editor where I can edit this command before executing it. If you don't want to do this, you can just paste this command to any text editor, maybe not Word, use, use Notepad, Notepad++, Sublime Text, VS Code, anything that doesn't add formatting. And edit the variable here from 1.13 something to 1.15. Now when I'm done, I can save and exit. And that'll install Go. So now Go is installed on in our system, and now I want to execute this command also, which sets a bunch of environment variables, because Go is very strict about um, paths where things get built, and so on and so on. So we will need this in order to have a successful build of Go. Now, this is where I, I usually... Uh, deviate a bit um what i will do now is check out the master from uh singularity from their github repository and also check check out the dependencies that it will need so the two commands are go get the golang dependency command app and go get singularity github sources and I'm posting all of these uh, commands as a GitHub gist, so don't now frantically type away on these things. You can then just go to the video and follow it. Right, so once that is done, I want to check out a stable version. This gets the, the above command, the go get, gets the uh, master, now, now called main branch of uh, Singularity, and that is unstable. So we want to get the latest stable release, which is why we can say export version equals 364, and we check out that version. So now we are in this go source GitHub, blah, blah, blah directory. And we have checked out the latest stable version, which is 3.6.4. What's up next is building Singularity, and this will take a while. So this is where you go and get coffee. So these three commands, mconfig, make, and make install, they prepare Singularity for building from source, then they build from source, and then they install the built binaries into their predetermined directories. Now this will take about 5 to 10 minutes, so I will be speeding ahead the video here. And there, it's done. Now I will be creating a directory in my home directory called Singularity, which is where I want to store 
all my singularity images and after I've created this directory I also set up an environment variable to it called singularity image dir and I also add this directory to my path so executables that are in it will be found by Linux. Right now all that's left is to test it out. Singularity is installed so let's first go back to our home directory and let's build our first singularity image. I have selected the uh, NCBI's SRA tools, which is a toolkit they offer to interact with the sequence read archive, so public sequencing data, which is what we'll need next time to get our public RNA seq data that we want to investigate. So the command for this is singularity build and then the path to the image and then the source of the image. So the source of the image is actually a docker file provided by NCBI called SRA tools. So when we run this, Singularity will get the docker file and build it and make a single executable file from it called SRA tools.sif in our Singularity image dir, which is in dollar home, so wherever your home directory is slash Singularity. Right, we can check that. If we type ls-l singularity, there is the file sra tools.sif singularity image file. And now let's let's test it. So this is in our path, so we can just type sra tools.sif. And in order for the sra tools to work, we first need to be running the vdb config command to set up the sra tools. Um, this gives you an interactive way to set that up. I usually go to cache and disable local file caching and then I go to tools and prefetch downloads to current directory. These are just my personal preferences. You can set that up as you want to. It doesn't make a huge difference. Save and exit. And now it's configured. So now we can download our first data set from the sequence read archive. And I have selected a small tiny data set that is a paired and rna -seq library from yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae and the way that we do that is uh, with the faster q dump command which dumps the sra file into fast q format and i like the minus minus progress option so i can see what's going on and then we put the id of the sra file so err 338 or four, five, four. So what it will do now is it will fetch that file and create one, two, or three files in our home directory. Since we haven't set the directory where it will write, it will write our current directory. Um, one file if it's single end, two file if it's paired end, and a third file if we also include technical reads. But we don't, so it's either gonna, going to be one or two files. Now this is a relatively small data set, so this should be fairly quick, depending on your internet speed. And that's it. We have two files here now. The forward, reverse, first, second mate of these. We can quickly check. We can have a sneak peek into these files using the ls command. And we see this is fastq format 151 uh, base pairs reads and perfect you can quit less with q if you don't know and that's it i will delete these files now since these are not actually the ones that we're going to be using they're just small enough for testing and that's it so so next time we are going to be downloading a real data set, a full data set with replicates, a nice run. I haven't selected which one yet. And what we're going to be doing is input QC. So we're going to take our fastq files and we're going to look at several programs and reports and plots and things of them um, to decide whether or not they are high quality, whether or not they have certain types of issues. And then we'll talk about what we could do about that. But the actual pre-processing is going to be the next, next session. 
See you then.